Hello, welcome to PC Jack. This week, Intel finally launched its 11th gen of Rocket Lake S CPUs, but things didn't quite go to plan. So I thought I'd make this video as a follow-up video on the uh, announcement of uh, Rocket Lake S and uh, the leaks that came a couple of weeks back. For those of you unaware, Intel launched its 11th gen of Rocket Lake S CPUs on Tuesday, March 30th, based on the Cypress Cove architecture from 10 nanometer, which has now been backported to 14 nanometer, with improvements such as PCIe Gen 4 support and also a supposed 19% increase in IPC. The lineup includes SKUs such as the 11600K, the 11700K, and the 11900K, along with a refresh of the Comet Lake S lineup for the more budget friendly options they'll have. Suffice to say, reviews are in for Rocket Lake, and things are not looking too well for Intel. While things seem to be looking a bit better for the 11600K, it seems to be a fairly decent option for anyone that's looking for just a simple gaming PC build, as it features 6 cores and 12 threads, and competes fairly well with Ryzen's 5600X. Despite being on par in terms of gaming performance, it is still slightly disadvantaged in the fact that it's still on an old processing node, which means higher power consumption and lower performance in productivity applications. With the 5600X still costing just over £300 at the time of filming, and availability being a bit more scarce, it does actually make it quite a decent option for those that are looking to uh, just get a simple gaming only system. Admittedly, stock for Zen 3 has improved since launch as the uh, Ryzen 5 and 7 parts are actually a lot easier to find now. It just seems to be the Ryzen 9 parts are still a bit more difficult to locate at the moment. Unless pricing changes anytime soon though, the 11600K seems like a pretty decent option for anyone that's looking to build a gaming only system right now. However, productivity tests are still better suited to the 5600X for its multi-core performance enhancements from Zen 2. Now, compared to the 11600K, the 11700K has uh, had a very lukewarm reception at best when it comes to uh, reviews, especially after early retail uh, releases actually meant that some reviewers were able to review it before the official launch had even happened. With a very lackluster performance to boot, it's very difficult to justify this with such a marginal improvement over previous gens 10700K, which is still obviously at a much lower cost compared to the 11700K at launch, which is expected after a certain amount of time. While pretty poorly received by reviewers, it seems Intel have a more concerning matter in trying to actually justify the existence of its flagship, the 11900K. Now, the 11900K seems to be where Intel have reached a crossroad when it comes to their 14 nanometer manufacturing process. Compared to the 10900K with its 10 cores and 20 threads, the 11900K has dropped down 2 cores to 8 cores and 16 threads, matching the core layout of the 11700K but with higher boost clocks. A side effect of the Cypress Code backporting process, this decision makes it really difficult to compare with its direct compares to the 5900X with its 12 cores and 24 threads, and the near matching price point between the two but Intel is even competing with itself with the fact that the previous gen's flagship is still a better buy than the current gen's flagship, the 11900K. And this is even in a multitude of benchmarks, whether it be gaming or productivity based. Costing nearly £200 more than the 10900K, Intel are going to have a really difficult time justifying the actual cost of the 11900K unless prices do change over time. The 11900K seems to be a clear indicator of the 14 nanometer manufacturing process finally reaching the threshold of what it can possibly do, and it seems to be that reviewers are having a field day with these ones right now as it's not looking very favourable at all. Overall, it seems that Rocket Lake S has a very marginal improvement over Comet Lake, but sadly, Intel are making this very clear that this seems to be a stopgap until Alder Lake arrives later this year, hopefully on a 10 nanometer manufacturing process provided that doesn't get delayed again anytime soon. To Intel's credit though, they are beating AMD in a certain manner as obviously having their own fabs in order to manufacture these processors, the availability for these CPUs seems to be pretty decent at the moment, whether that's because not as many people are interested in Intel's latest offerings compared to AMD, but obviously AMD are still having to rely on TSMC for all of its manufacturing at the moment, whether it be for CPUs or GPUs or even for the uh, newest consoles at the moment. So despite still being stuck on the 14 nanometer process, I will give Intel props for if they can manage to uh, maintain availability going forward. While things don't look too bad for the uh, 11600K, only time will tell for the i7 and i9 moving forward and whether their price will better reflect their such marginal improvements over previous generation. 
seems we'll just have to wait and see. Or maybe we'll just have to wait for 12th gen or go AMD. So that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more on the way soon. I shall see you in the next one. Thank you. Thank you.